Collingwood. Welcome everybody to the Collingwood Chamber of Commerce All Candidates Meeting for the 2022 municipal election. Welcome to the Royal Canadian Legion and specifically the Normandy Room here in Collingwood. My name is Shane McLaughlin. I was former president of the Chamber of Commerce and director for many years. I'm very pleased to be your moderator for tonight's event. And I want to start by thanking Rogers TV for covering this event. Um, check with them. The Chamber doesn't know, so don't bother contacting the Chamber when this is going to air. Contact Rogers directly uh, or go to their website. Uh, it's not only going to be on TV, it's also going to be um, online. So you'll be able to access it even if you don't have Rogers TV. Today we have the councillor candidates here to discuss the issues that matter to all of us in Collingwood. Monday, October 24th, 2022 is election day for municipalities and school boards across Ontario. Collingwood voters, along with its neighboring municipalities, will cast their vote using the internet or a paper ballot. These method methods provide flexibility, which allows for a longer voter voting period than traditional voting. It's also more convenient, more accessible, and better enables electors to exercise their right to vote. Collingwood residents will have the opportunity to cast a ballot for one mayor, one deputy mayor, and up to seven councillors for Collingwood Council, as well as a school board trustee. Voting will open at 10 a.m. on October 8th and will run until 8 p.m. on October 24th, 2022. Staff from the town of Collingwood are here tonight and they're at a table in the front lobby at the back of the room and they will be able to assist you with any questions you might have regarding this election process, this year's election process. Also a little housekeeping thing, if you're looking for some COVID tests, thank you to the Chamber of Commerce, they've got a bunch of them that you can grab on the way out the door if you'd like, so help yourself. We have a timekeeper seated in front, hold your hand up, there she is. So the candidates will be aware when they are running short on time. Each candidate will have two minutes for opening remarks. They will get a 30 second reminder to wrap up and at the end of their time, a bell will sound and the microphones will be turned off or I will just simply rudely talk over them. <laughs> just. Following all opening remarks, questions submitted earlier by the people in our community have been placed into a jar, high tech. And I will pull a question and direct it to a candidate. I will read the question out for everyone to hear. That candidate then has one minute to respond to the question posed to them, and the remaining candidates will also have one minute to respond to the same question if they choose to. This format will continue as time allows. Each question submitted to the Chamber Office have been placed into this jar with no editing done to these questions. In an effort of transparency, we have designated them by a number because we have multiple questions about the same topic. So if a question is pulled, uh, with a number on it that's already been asked, we will put it aside for another question. So if it was something to do with the terminals and we've already addressed that, I'll put that one aside so that we can cover as many topics as we can. Following the question section, each candidate will have one minute for their closing remarks. Uh, candidate George Dickinson has declined the invitation to be here tonight, unfortunately, and Steve Berman is also not here this evening. The order of speaking was chosen by draw just prior to the program this evening, and as luck would have it, our first candidate to speak tonight is Cam Ecclestone. Please put your hands together. Is the mic on? Can you hear me okay? Is that better? <laughs> Yes, that's good. Okay, good. Uh, being first is always a good thing, I think. Uh, we'll find out. I was born and raised in Toronto and went to North Toronto Collegiate. Uh, after graduating, I went to the University of Western Ontario, uh, managing uh, uh, in business and economics major. And uh, when I went to Western, draft beer was 10 cents, uh, 10 cents a draft, so <laughs> the times have changed a little bit. And, and on Tuesday nights, we saw Rocket, Ronnie Hawkins every Tuesday night, 10, so that was a good thing. 
Five decades. I've spent about 50 years in the business uh, industry, mostly in the business world industry, and mostly in uh, leadership roles. Uh, uh, and, and the business forum took me to uh, Montreal for nine years, I did it for three and back to Toronto. And in 2000, I moved to Collingwood to be with our, our, our friends that moved up here. And I became a financial advisor. Uh, I became a financial advisor in uh, 2000. And I uh, did the financial planning for 120 uh, families. Uh, on the political front, I had seven years of experience, three as a mayor in, in Halbert, uh, Lutterworth Township, and by three years there, we were able to stabilize the tax base at zero, zero, and minus one. I also served at Hollywood Council 2014 to 2018. I did a lot of work on youth homelessness, and I'm very proud of that work. We've got a, a 53, 53 Campbell Street. There, there we go. <laughs> Something. When you move the mic, sorry about don't that, hit the button. Uh, sorry about that. That's what happened. Anyway, I did a lot of work on youth homelessness, which I'm very proud of. And we have a 10-bedroom house at 53 Campbell Street that's run by Hope Horizon, who are doing a very good job. That's currently called the Barbara Weiner House. Anyway, I want your support so that I can continue that work uh, on youth homelessness, which I have a passion for. Thank you. Thank you, Cam. <laughs> Next. Next, we have Rob Ring. Good evening. My name is Rob Ring. It's my pleasure being here tonight. Hopefully, when we leave here, you'll feel good about supporting me on October 24th. My wife, and Liz, my wife Liz and I raised three children. We also have five fabulous grandchildren. I was born at the Collingwood General Marine Hospital, and I've never lived anywhere except Collingwood. This is a claim I proudly share wherever I travel. Over the next term of council, tough decisions are going to have to be made, and strong people need to be part of the decision-making process. My hard work and hands-on approach is evident by being a proud recipient of the Order of Collingwood, along with my induction as a builder into the Collingwood Sports Hall of Fame. In June, I retired after a 24-year tenure on the Ontario Minor Hockey Association Board of Directors, of which, of which I have the distinction of being the longest-serving president. I can assure you I'm a leader and not a follower. That doesn't mean I can't work well within a team environment, because informed opinions, healthy discussion, and positive debate are, debate are very important when making a decision. I'm my own person, will always vote accordingly. Having said that, I'm a strong believer of democracy, and regardless how I vote, once a motion is passed or defeated, I'll support the decision of the majority. As mentioned, over the next four years, difficult decisions are inevitable. Council will need to be more open-minded and able to think outside the box for answers. That doesn't mean we make change just for the sake of making change. If affordable change makes sense and using a common sense approach, Council should be able to achieve it. We can't have the attitude, this is the way we've always done it. Thank you for your consideration. When you mark your ballot, please vote Rob Ring. You won't be disappointed. Next, we have Steve Johns. Steve? Well, thank you. I want to thank all of you for taking the time to be here uh, and the Collingwood Chamber of Commerce for organizing this session. I view this election as an opportunity to make a positive and substantive contribution to the town I have proudly called home since my wife and I moved here in August of 2020. Given my skill set and working experience and with the strong encouragement received from many local sources and my family, I'm confident in my ability to provide high level energy, enthusiasm, fresh perspective, constructive input, and persuasive and representative advocacy. Regarding my ex uh, career experience of particular relevance to my candidacy, it includes eight years at City Hall in Toronto as executive assistant to two city uh, and metro councillors, and most recently, 15 and a half years at the Canadian Chamber of Commerce in the position of senior director of corporate member and association relations. While it is difficult to boil down my platform to a short list of priorities, a few are as follows. Uh, first of all, sustainable pr uh, preservation and enhancement of key assets, such as the critical and green infrastructure, the waterfront, the grain terminals, the trail, uh, trail network for sure, uh, among others. 
reliable provision of essential municipal services, including social and amenities, uh, and an early development of the strategic financial plan given the town's increasing financial pressures. I think uh, it's going to be uh, a trying time in 2023 with the budget. A responsible, comprehensive, innovative and sustainable development strategy that recognizes current and future needs and evolving demographics and also supports and bolsters Collingwood's strength, character, heritage and economic development and job creation capacity. Attainable and affordable housing, there's a need for a strategic, innovative and collaborative approach. An aggressive promotion of Collingwood is a safe, attractive and unique place in which to live, work, play, invest and frankly celebrate. So thank you very much for coming. Look forward to talking to you further. I almost got to talk over him. <laughs> Steve Perry. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. As you know, my name is Steve Perry. My family and I moved to Collingwood in 2012. However, I've been coming up here since I was a teenager. Collingwood was always a place I wanted to retire. Luckily for me, I didn't have to wait until I retired to become a full-time resident of this wonderful community. For several years, I was a small business owner, and with that business, I had the privilege of working with many municipal staff, mostly Parks and Rec, throughout Canada, which I thoroughly enjoyed. My business, which was teaching filmmaking to mostly elementary students, through in-class workshops and summer camps, allowed me to interact with numerous teachers, principals, and students. In these workshops, we focused on the importance of teamwork, collaboration of ideas. I believe this is a very important skill. We all have great ideas to bring to the table and must work as a team to get things done. One of my passions for Collingwood lies in the amazing trail system. My father-in-law, George Christie, was instrumental in establishing these trails when he returned to Collingwood to retire 30 years ago. I would like to see Collingwood's trails continue to develop and expand so that one would be able to ride a bike from one end of town to the other, either on a trail or a clearly marked and established bike lane on the road. In conjunction with this vision, I believe that we need to have more bike lanes on our town streets and where bike lanes are not possible, a three meter sidewalk like on the north side of 1st Street. We will be faced with many important issues over the next four years, including growth, affordable housing, homelessness, the building of a new hospital, an arts and culture center, and a Rexplex as well. As a community, we need to do our part in helping to control climate as well. I would be, it would be a privilege for me to be part of Collingwood's Council in helping to mold and influence our town's future, not only for the next four years, but for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. And now on to Deb Doherty. Collingwood is growing so rapidly, and there's one overarching question we need to answer. How can we continue to shape the town that we envision for our future? We have to grow smart, sustainably, protecting our small town feel and the natural features we love and need. Our new official plan will assist with a made in Collingwood roadmap to ensure that we are designing quality neighborhoods that are livable, walkable, co complete and safe. It facilitates new opportunities for different types and sizes of housing for rent and for ownership because we need to make a commitment to our business community that we will enable them to attract and keep the employees they need to prosper. We have to grow smart by acting on Collingwood's declaration of a climate crisis because climate change costs us in real dollars. Consider the catastrophic shoreline damage at Sunset Point and flooding of our yards or our basements. I want to see all of our most significant capital projects get done. The, ther the terminals redevelopment, the water treatment plant expansion, the Harborview Water Play Park, 
and material advancement, even completion of an all arts facility, a multi-use recreational facility, and a very much needed new hospital. I'm running to make sure that we grow smart. Thank you, thank you, Deb. And now to Kathy Jeffrey. Thank you very much, everyone, for taking the time to be here this evening and I extend also my thanks to all the organizers and the media uh, for making it possible for you. Um, my priorities tonight are to listen through the questions as to what uh, you are concerned about and obviously to ask for your vote. I've served uh, four terms. Uh, I've been privileged to serve four terms on uh, Collingwood and um, I have my brochure circulated. I won't repeat anything that's in there and I hope that you uh, uh, take the time to review it. Um, and the biggest question I have received this, uh, this campaign is why? And it's to keep our town moving forward in the best possible version of the community's vision, which is why I will want to see and ask that in the first quarter we revisit the community-based strategic plan to check back in with you as to what your priorities are. Uh, the how is I bring experience, I'm a legal secretary by education, I'm a staff accountant and audit technician by training, and I can bring a leadership role to this council. I've um, had leadership roles nationally with the Federation of Canadian Municipalities and within many of the committees uh, of our town. Um, so I commit to continuing to bring effective initiatives for council uh, consideration. Uh, many of those over my terms have, for example, have been the outdoor ice rink, UV disinfection um, to be used at the water treatment plant. Um, can't read my writing. Uh. <laughs> More aggressive um, bylaw um, enforcement, particularly with short-term um, accommodations um, as they're impacting our neighborhoods. Uh, the land acknowledgement for council meetings, the affordable housing task force, the $2 million hospital redevelopment, and um, the uh, stewarding of the MZO for a, a, a potential future hospital location. Um, so I really please ask you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Chris Potts. Good evening. I would like to begin by thanking the Chamber of Commerce for providing this meeting tonight, and as well as you, the members of the public, and the viewers at home. I was born and raised in the town of Collingwood, and currently, along with my wife Jennifer, we're raising our three children. As a previous employee of the town of Collingwood, where I spent close to 13 years working in the Public Works Department, and those years including working directly on our sanitary infrastructure, our road maintenance, our sidewalk maintenance, our tree maintenance, and winter operations. I was the workers' health and safety rep. I sat on a committee that worked alongside the Ministry of Labour, and as well, I was the vice president of QP Local 1217 and the chair of the contract bargaining unit. In my 39 years, I've been committed to my community, and I spent three, three years as a calling minor baseball coach, two years as a president of minor fastball, nine years on the executive of Collingwood Minor Hockey with three years as president. I led the Minor Hockey Executive through both the rebrand from the Collingwood Blackhawks to now the Junior Blues, as well as I led Minor Hockey through COVID as I was recognized coast to coast in CBC Ontario morning for following the proper protocols to allow kids back on the ice. I have also spent the last three years as the Community Events Coordinator for the Collingwood Junior A Blues. In 2022, I was the recipient of the Collingwood Blues Community Award. These past events, both in my professional and personal life, show that I'm a natural born leader and I've always put my community first. As your counsellor, some areas of my platform are as follows. Transparency and honesty, accountability and responsibility, upgrade our infrastructure, rebuild our town streets, create affordable housing and support relocation of the hospital. I bring a strong perspective to the council table in regards to understanding the daily struggles of living in Collingwood, raising a family here. It's not only my community, it's our community. I ask for your support on October 24th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Now, Brandon Houston. Hello, my name is Brandon Houston. I have been an entrepreneur for nearly two decades, having built multiple businesses and currently run two in downtown Collingwood. 
a video production company with a local team that supports clients in over 15 countries around the world, and the Collingwood Foundry, a co-working space where business owners and entrepreneurs come together in my building downtown. There are over 170 businesses that I work with weekly. Some are decades old and some are brand new, but they all want to call Collingwood home. I've traveled as a Canadian delegate to the G20, helping on policy development for entrepreneurship. I've been a part of several economic development advisory committees and task forces over the last 10 years, including the Collingwood Economic Recovery and Support Task Force that was formed to help our local businesses during the pandemic. While tonight it's important to hear about our thoughts and views, it's also important that you learn about who we are and how we will approach this important work. In every decision I make, I take a thoughtful and collaborative approach. I do the research and I listen. It's why so many entrepreneurs feel welcome when they walk through the doors at the Foundry and are willing to share their challenges and their concerns. It's why for the last month I've kept my doors open to anybody that wants to step through and ask me questions. Many of you have. I have a passion for this community of Collingwood and if elected, I'll take the same approach. I'll be collaborative, I'll be thoughtful, I'll do the research and I'll listen. We're going to be answering questions about issues that are important to you tonight. And all of us are here may not agree on the right answer, but that's not necessarily what's most important. What's most important is that we have a team that can work together and solve these challenges. Remember, any one counselor cannot promise anything or guarantee an outcome, which makes your job more important. Choosing a team that can work together to get things done. I believe I can be effective part of that team. Individually, we don't have all the answers, but collectively, we can make good things happen for Collingwood. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. And now on to Ian Chadwick. Evening, and thanks for coming out. It's wonderful to see so many people who care about Collingwood. And that's why I'm up here tonight, because I also care deeply about this community. I believe Collingwood can and should do better, and I want to be part of that. I'm an outspoken person. I speak out against things I believe are wrong for this community. And I speak out in favor of the things I believe are in our best interests. I was outspoken on local media. I was outspoken when I served on council. And I'm told I'm a little outspoken on the blog I've been writing for the last decade. You can count on me to continue to be outspoken when I'm on council. I didn't come here tonight to make a lot of promises about the wonderful things I'm going to do for you when I'm on council. If you want to know more about me and where I stand on issues, please check my website, chadwickforcouncil.ca. But I will make you one promise. When I'm on council, I will do my utmost to make this the best community it can possibly be. You can count on me to read, to ask questions, and to make informed decisions. This is my home too, and I care deeply about everything that happens here. I'm committed to making calling with the best, and I hope you'll vote for me. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. And now, uh, last but not least, Christopher Baines. Thank you. My name's Christopher Baines, and I'm a candidate for council. And I'm concerned and running because I'm concerned about Collingwood and its future. I spent the last four years, actually the previous four years, on the Collingwood Police Services Board. And I oversaw implementation of a successful pilot project for mental health slash police interventions. About a third of police calls in Collingwood are to mental health situations. By taking them out of a uniform, by putting them in civilian cars and having a mental health worker and someone from the hospital, it greatly reduced the stress level in the community for these types of calls. An excellent pilot project that really pre presented a lot of results. I listened and I learned from that experience. I've just spent the last four years on the Committee of Adjustment, uh, where we experience every month the challenges of our fast-growing town through the many applications for changes, through variances or severances and what have you. We learn 
details that no one else seems to know, or at least not enough know. The chronic flooding problems of Niagara Street, the sewage backups at St. Marie and Collins, which are continually plaguing us. That's why this town really needs to uh, roll up its sleeves and get some of these ongoing uh, problems fixed. I've listened to these and I've learned from these experiences. I was also a member of the Poet Laureate Selection Committee where I learned and saw firsthand the wonderful creative arts community that this town has. Big supporter of the arts and a growing arts uh, support for this town. It will be our future and really help us grow. And I'd like to do a shout out now for a living arts center. We need one now badly. And this meeting here tonight and the challenge with getting everyone seated just reinforces that need. More particularly, in the last three years, I've been president, and I'd like thank to thank everyone. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, candidates, I have to tell you, you did a pretty good job because I've looked out into the audience and I only saw two people with their eyes closed. <laughs> and they worked the night shift last night, so you're okay. Closed captioning is brought to you in part by Raven Reads. Unbox Indigenous Voices. Subscribe today at ravenreads.org. president of the RVH Auxiliary. Although we can't be there in person right now, the volunteers, the people that you see in the blue vests, continue to raise funds for RVH. We've been a fundraising force for RVH for over 125 years, having raised $12 million in the past 12 years. The Auxiliary continues this work with our most recent pledge of $5 million. All proceeds go to patient care at RVH. Our jackpot draws will be held monthly with early bird prizes for each draw. In our first jackpot draw, the winner took home over $36,000. The early bird prizes include a combination of cash and gift cards supporting local businesses. The auxiliary raises funds to help ensure that when our loved ones need care, they have the best available right here in our region. So buy your tickets early and don't miss out on your chance to win. Could you use some extra cash? Tune into McLaren Arts Center TV Bingo on Rogers TV for your chance to win. We have $2,500 in prizes up for grabs every Tuesday night. Five ways to play, 20 chances each night, but only one way to win. Tune into McLaren Arts Center TV Bingo, Tuesdays at 8 p.m., only on Rogers TV. Now we will pull questions from the bowl, the jar. The candidate being asked the question gets one minute to respond. Following this, any candidate that would like to add something more will be given one minute if they so choose. So the first person up will be Rob Ring. Do you want an easy or a hard? <laughs> Just kidding. Just give me 20 minutes to research it. Yeah. <laughs> The question is, would you be in favor of a code of conduct for elected officials? Um, I would because it, uh, it's already in place. <laughs> we, we, uh, we're going we're gonna to get orientated, anybody gets elected after, after the election, and we've already had a workshop on it already, so um, whether I think we should have it or not, it's already there. <laughs> Okay. Thank you very much, Rob. Now, Steve Johns, do you wish to add anything? Well, I, I really uh, don't have much to add. Uh, we we uh, have a code of conduct in place. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, positive th uh, work that has been done around uh, conduct, around integrity. Uh, 
obviously, uh, these are important uh, elements in, uh, in, in the overall governance structure, and uh, so I'm in full support and agreement that uh, uh, and a, a code of conduct and a stro strong code of conduct has to be in place and has to be abided by. Thank you. Steve Perry. I do understand there is a code of conduct, but I don't think you can underestimate the, uh, the importance of the word respect. Um, I've watched many council meetings on YouTube and, and past, especially with the, um, the lockdown, so when there were virtual meetings, and being able to sit there and look and watch some of the behavior, to be honest with you, as a, as a voter in Collingwood, I was quite shocked. Uh, I believe it needs to stop, and the code of conduct needs to be enforced fully. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Deb Doherty, if you'd like to add. Thank you. We have a s strong code of conduct. We have a strong procedural bylaw. We have a very strong uh, code of ethics, and all of those were hard won, and it's important for all of council to continue to abide by them. As a member of the new AMO Small Urban Caucus, I also intend to bring some of our learning in this municipality uh, forward to the province of Ontario. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. <laughs> Kathy Jeffrey. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. MC. So our uh, code of conduct is critically important and it has evolved over the years with advice from a lot of areas. And I expect that review of that code of conduct would continue. And of course, there's the expectation that everybody will be respectful and will be following it. So thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Chris Potts. Yes, I would be in full support of uh, Code of Conduct. As elected officials, uh, we represent the community. And if this uh, community is going to move forward in a uh, positive forward motion, uh, following the Code of Conduct is very important and is something that I would, again, support. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Brandon Houston, would you like to add anything? Um, I don't have a whole lot to add because, as was already said, we already have a code of conduct. Um, but I think what's important is, as we sit all around the table, um, we have to realize that we're building a relationship here and we have to work together. So regardless of that code of conduct, um, we, we need to treat each other with respect. That's really all I want to add. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> Ian Chadwick. Thank you. Yes. I strongly support a code of conduct because I was on the council that brought the first one in to Collingwood. I believe it was uh, 2000, around 2010, and uh, Norm Sandberg brought the motion in, and I seconded it. Code of conduct evolves uh, to meet the changing needs of, of the community and to meet the changing needs of the legislation. So it's, so it's a living document, and it has to be reviewed all the time, and it has to be updated. So I support the whole process. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Christopher Barnes, or Baines, sorry, Baines. Baines, yes. As a practicing mediator for the past 20 years, dealing with organizations, boards of directors, um, many different groups in conflict, uh, I fully support a code. And more importantly, I would also go further and say that each candidate, each, as a matter of fact, a candidate across the province ought to read our judicial inquiry, and I would support the implementation of those recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. <laughs> Cam Ecclestone. Yeah, a code of conduct is, uh, is critical to the success of a, of a council, and uh, we have to know what's right and what's not right, and uh, accept that from, from others. And uh, very important, critical to the su success of a council. Thank you very much. Steve Johns. Hit me. What I do? Hit me. Yes. I'm looking forward to your question. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, you've already answered that one. Okay. 
Oh, oh I, I thought I did answer that already. Uh, my script was wrong. All right, I'll dig to the bottom. Here we go. <laughs> what do you think of the MC tonight? Outstanding. Oh, good answer. All right, here's the question. Parks, recreation, and culture are all lumped together in the town budget, operating and capital expenditures. Many of the current councillor candidates, bios, and community involvement seem heavily weighted towards sports, hockey, skiing, hiking, etc., which would endear them to parks and recreation. What do you each feel about the importance of arts and culture in our community and of having a regional arts and cultural center in Collingwood? That's a mouthful. It is. Um, well, I'm very supportive of both uh, 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 a new recreational facility, but certainly as well uh, an arts, uh, arts and entertainment, arts and culture uh, facility. There's a huge appetite for it in this town, uh, and I, I've become fully aware of that as I've been out on the hustings. I hear it repeatedly uh, as this town continues to grow uh, and diversify. Uh, there really is... Uh, critical uh, need for that kind of facility and I will be uh, fully supportive of uh, moving things forward expeditiously on that score. Thank you very much. Steve Perry. I'm fully supportive of an arts and culture center. Uh, it would be f amazing to have it downtown if at all possible. I keep thinking of Meaford and the Meaford Hall. It, wouldn't something like that be wonderful in Collingwood that we could bring in entertainment? And to add to that, a Meaford Hall with workshop rooms. So different, different um, groups can run workshops, community-based workshops, arts and crafts for kids. I think that uh, goes without saying we need that in this town. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Deb Doherty. Thank you. I moved here 34 years ago, and one of the first people that I met was Catherine Hike, who spoke to me about the notion of a standalone all arts facility for the town of Collingwood. So, we have made such an advancement just in these past four years with a very committed arts community. We have a feasibility study in place. We have money set aside, and I know there's money in this community to make it come to fruition. So I am very much in, in support, and I hope that we can make this happen in the next four years. Thank you, Deb. <laughs> Kathy Jeffrey. Uh, thank you very much. My late dear friend, Barbara Wider, I can see her now up, up above cheering for this question because Barbara had files, I think, for about 14 locations that had been considered uh, in terms of an all arts centre. So very much supportive of this in the holistic approach to the health of our uh, town and communities. It's, an, it's an important for tourism, it's important for us as residents, and it's important for um, our children and an example going forward. So thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Chris Potts. Yeah, um, in regards to an arts center, yes, I'm, uh, I'm in support of it. Uh, over the uh, previous few months, canvassing door to door, it's been a, it's been a top priority and a, and a request from the public. And, and uh, you know, looking at just the community alone and kind of with the direction we're going, uh, I think uh, I would be in full support of an arts center. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Brandon Houston. Um, arts and culture is a main thread that ties a community together. It's a major economic driver, um, and it's something that brings tourism into the area. The fact that we don't have one yet is incredibly surprising to me, given the wealth of cultural talent that we have in this community. So I, I'd say it's one of the main things that we should look at at least over the next four years. Thank you, Brandon. Ian Chadwick. As a writer and a part-time musician, my only question would be, where can we put it? Because 
as far as, as far as I can hear, every other decision has basically been made. We need it, everybody wants it. Uh, there's a demand for it. We need theater space, we need practice space, we need workshops. Yes, now, where do we put it? I think that's the only real decision we have that this council will have to come up with because I think everybody is in favor of it. I am too. Thank you, Ian. <laughs> Christopher Baines. Baines yes. I got it. I, 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 I learned quick. I'm a two-footer on this. The first foot is, as president of the Optimist Club, for the last three years, COVID killed our mother of all yard sales. So what did we do? We had to pivot. And the way we pivoted is doing a partnership with the Collingwood Blues, Go Blues Go, to raise over 39,000 bucks that went right back to sports groups and charity, charitable groups right here in Collingwood. Great deal, it's great. That's my first foot. The second foot, as I've said already, is big supporter of the Living Arts Center. So. Uh, let's get on with both of them. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Cam Ecclestone. Yeah, Collingwood deserves a, all of you deserve a arts and culture center. And uh, it's critical to, uh, you know, for all of us to uh, be entertained and uh, et cetera, et cetera. I would propose, it's a big number, it's a big number, and I would propose perhaps a special levy on the tax bill to take care of this uh, because it's not going to happen unless we uh, we raise a ton of money. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Rob Ring. Uh, let me begin by saying that uh, whenever I answer a question, I'm going to try to answer it honestly. And uh, you know what the next is coming. I do truly support. Uh, uh, an arts and uh, culture and entertainment center. I, I, I let me begin by saying that, but I also have to know we can afford to do it. I'm hearing that we have. I personally don't have access to to the proof of it. Once it's given to me, I will fully support a, an arts and uh, arts and culture center because I, I believe the town needs it. But uh, I would like to see the numbers before uh, before give it a hundred percent commitment. Thank you very much. Focus better. Partner better. Sleep better. Breathe better. Love better. Work better. Friend better. Unwind better. Everything gets better when you get active. My Uncle Cheney was one of over 150,000 Indigenous children that were taken to residential schools between the 1800s and 1996. My uncle ran away from school, wanting to get home to his mom and dad. And sadly, he didn't make it and died of exposure. When Gord Downey found out about my late Uncle Cheney's story, he wrote Secret Path, a series of poems that became an album, then a graphic novel, a documentary, and a concert. Gord met my family, and together we formed the Gord Downey and Cheney Winjack Fund. Together, we are sharing Secret Path and other reconciliation resources with legacy schools, setting up legacy spaces across Canada, and hosting events like Secret Path Week to inspire all Canadians to engage in reconciliation. action. Before he left us, Gord asked us all to do something. You're going to figure it out. Will you join us? Together, we can make Canada a better place. What kind of show do you want to see on Rogers TV? What interests you? Log on to rogerstv.com, fill out a show proposal, and tell us about your segment idea. We want to know what you want to see. Rogers TV, only on Rogers. What specific and timely action will you take to provide truly affordable housing, including homelessness and a living wage? Oh my goodness. 
I, and I'll be perfectly honest with you, I cannot control affordable housing. It comes from a federal, um, county, and municipal. Everyone needs to get together to deal with this issue. It is, it is huge in this town. Uh, driving around today at work, I noticed a few homeless people, and that breaks my heart to see that. I would love to see some, some resolution to those issues as well. I believe there are a lot of vacant lands around, not just in Collingwood, but in the region, that could be well used for affordable housing. We just need to get the county to sell that land, uh, not sell that land to private developers and use it for affordable housing. Get builders on board, get developers on board, and uh, I think that will be a good course of action to start dealing with this problem. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Now, Deb Doherty. For sure, it's a very complex problem, and we certainly are not the only community in Canada that's experiencing the issue. But there is lots of low-hanging fruit, and we can start with that. Our staff have recently come forward with a rapid accessory unit deployment program. Now, it still has to work through the planning department and through our legal department uh, because there could be issues. We're going to do things a little bit differently. But the whole idea is to make it quicker, cheaper, and easier to get an, a, a, an accessory unit into your home, either in your basement or in your laneway or in your backyard. So that's number one. Number two, we need to get a hold of short-term accommodation. We need to eliminate ghost homes in our community. Thank you very much, Deb. Kathy Jeffrey. Well, thank you uh, for, very much for the question, and I think the most expedient thing I could do is to support the recommendations that have come out from some very expert volunteers from our community on the Affordable Housing Task Force. I know staff have been following up on um, those recommendations, and council have been adopting them as quickly as we can, and I know for the first time the municipality has put funding into a reserve um, f uh, to pursue uh, those objectives. So I think the most expedient thing we can do is listen to the experts in our community and, uh, and support staff when they bring them forward. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Chris Potts. Understanding the importance of affordable housing, um, I think it's as, as hard difficult of a decision or in, in moving forward with it. Um, I, I think we need to, depending on how fast the relocation of the hospital would be, there's some great facilities there that we could probably accommodate uh, uh, some, some housing units. Along with uh, having our, our uh, representatives at the county, we have some, some empty schools in the area that we could potentially uh, look at you know, housing in there as well. Um, over the course of the past month, I visited myself the 10 cities that we have in the surrounding areas of Collingwood, and I spoke directly to the, to the individuals living there. And this town's in a crisis, and uh, without me making any promises, I will assure you that I'll do everything at the table to, uh, to, to try to solve the issue here in Collingwood. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Brandon Houston. We have committees and task forces that have done a good job at laying the groundwork, but we need to be moving faster. We need to be getting creative. We need to be getting innovative. Solutions that was mentioned with the secondary suites are a great example of that. However, I've spoke to a few people just in the last couple weeks that have tried to do that and have faced roadblocks with the town. So the most important thing that we can do on council is remove those roadblocks so that we can start to move faster. Thank you, Brandon. Ian Chadwick. No, no single municipality is ever going to solve the housing problem, but there are a few things we might be able to do to mitigate them. 
And by the way, there's a difference between affordable and attainable housing. There's different terms that come up. But there's a few things we can do as a municipality. The first is look at development charges, either reduce or defer them for certain kinds of housing, such as affordable, such as rental units. Um, and we might even be able to get rid of them. Um, we can look at tiny houses. A lot of municipalities have utilized tiny houses as a solution for attainable housing. There's lots of things to do to do about that here. I don't know if the model will work that well, but uh, we could we could talk to other municipalities, find out what their model is. And the last one is for, for uh, homelessness, partner with some of the, the community associations to see what we can do to help hostel space and some food problems. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Christopher Baines. I have no solutions for the uh, challenge in the short term, but uh, Ian's idea of uh, tiny houses uh, does make some sense. For the mid to long term, my s solution or proposition would be a dedicated 2% sales tax paid by the purchaser on all real estate purchases in this area that would be segregated as is the gas tax to the postal code. That money would then be held by a registered trust or a three-party, something like a housing co-op, or uh, along the lines of that, whereby you would have directors uh, from major industries, from uh, some council members and leading citizens. They would control the money. They would lend it out to the uh, building of an attainable apartment building or something to that such uh, sort with the rents going back to pay off the note. Uh, that may be a workable solution. I've heard it's working in other jurisdictions in the midterm to the long term, but it wouldn't do it for the short term, but perhaps Ian's idea would. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Cam Ecclestone. Yeah, I think two things. I think the, um, the next council has to get the um, developers on side and commit, have them commit to about 30% of their build out uh, to affordable housing, whether it be row housing uh, with uh, you know groups of four or whatever, and also down the road is a uh, is a popular medical city, I guess you'd call it, where council will have a lot of, uh, I guess a lot of uh, ideas on what could be developed, and apparently we could we could have a lot of affordable housing, in that, and it's a big deal. So, and it's it's not that far down the road. Thank you. Thank you, Cam. Rob Ring. As mentioned, solving the affordable housing concerns isn't going to be an easy task. I know it's going to be uh, a lot of work for everybody, but it's something that I think is our number one priority at this point. We, we've, we've got to do something. We've got to be more aggressive at finding ways. Do I have the answers? Not right now, no. But we do have, as mentioned, a, a task force that was put together, the uh, Affordable Housing Task Force, that has some very good recommendations that we should be reviewing and, and trying to put in place as quick as possible. Um, the idea of the uh, accessory dwelling units, the ADUs, that's another good step. If we can get that implemented and, and, and out there, we could get small uh, affordable apartments or, or uh, units that that will help alleviate the problem. Um, the, uh, the, the other day we had a, 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 another all candidates meeting and I, and I was told at that time that, or not me, we were all told at that time that this isn't a brand new issue in Collingwood and, and thank you. Thank you very much, Rob. Uh, Steve Johns. <laughs> well, first of all, I'd like to echo some of the remarks that have been made around the good work that's been done by the uh, uh, Affordable Housing Task Force. Uh, we've got actually the, uh, uh, the Collingwood World Summit coming up. There was the Affordable Housing Workshop back in June. I mean, a lot of good uh, uh, information recommendations have come out of those uh, events, and I think we have to heed those. There are barriers to new uh, affordable housing units that, that uh, we have to look at and accelerate uh, a response to. We need to be looking at a streamlined and accelerated process for reviewing uh, and approving affordable housing uh, development proposals that meet all necessary criteria uh, and permitting them to be built up to the maximum density noted in the town's official plan. 
forging strategic partnerships uh, with home builders and nonprofit housing developers, reducing development fees has been mentioned, uh, or considering exemptions in exchange for affordable and attainable housing units, reducing infrastructure connection charges, subject eligibility criteria being met. This is the kind of creative, innovative uh, thinking uh, that we have to be looking at. We have to be collaborative in the process. Thank you, Steve. If Deb Doherty can make her way up, we'll get the next question going. Oh, it's another long one. Presently, Collingwood residents have only two beaches that are open to them if they have a registered car through their municipal government. That is Sunset Point and Princeton Shores. All the beaches that were previously open to us were in the town of the Blue Mountains, which are now prohibited to Collingwood residents. What does this council foresee with regard to creating more access to beaches without residents being fined if they venture outside the parameters of the two official beach slash green spaces? Thank you. Uh, so this past summer, uh, engineering came forward with a report to council uh, outlining the 29, 29 accesses that we currently have to water throughout the municipality. Now, not all of them are easy access. Some are not much more than unopened road allowances, but they do exist. And staff have made a commitment to cleaning up and expanding some of them such that more people can access the water from those locations. I also want to say something about um, being fined. Um, all residents of Collingwood can park for free in our community, and we have an, a, an agreement with our other municipalities, Town of the Blue Mountains, Clearwater, or uh, Clearview. Thank you very much, Deb. Yeah. For a hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, strike that last part. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Kathy Jeffrey. Thank you. Um, so the existing water um, access that we do have has already been explained, and we're working hard on that to provide as much as we can to the public uh, through those public-owned spaces. I think we've done a terrific job at um, expanding the access to Sunset Point for residents with the free parking for residents uh, down there and some specific spots for them. Uh, I think uh, looking forward to the green terminals development, there's going to be some pretty uh, spectacular options in that development to, to also expand our access to the water and for water funds. So I think we're doing a terrific job and I look forward to doing more. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Chris Potts. Yeah, in regards to the, uh, to the waterfront, um, I think when they talk about making some of the access points that we do have accessible, I've worked on many of those access points and there's not a lot of space there to, uh, to make that happen. Um, so I don't know how that, uh, that dream is going to come true. Um, but also too, with what we do have, um, I, I think that, you know, this is our community and you know, having our re local residents with, with free access or free parking is, is great, but we need to uh, start to really enforce uh, the, the visitors coming in to make sure that we can enjoy our own. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Brandon Houston. Um, I think part of the challenge might actually be communication because until Deb came up, I didn't realize that there were any other type of agreements with any other region here. So I was going to come up and say that we need to work with our neighbors because even though we're Collingwood, we are all one region and we need to be able to collaborate with them. I wish you could have finished your statement because I actually want to know more about that. <laughs> um, so I think part of our problem is communication and maybe we just need to improve how we tell our residents what they have access to. Might get a chance, Brandon, because I think after this meeting, the candidates are going to stand around and Deb will be in that corner right over there. <laughs> Ian Chadwick. Thank you. The only thing I want to add to that 
is that our library has an agreement with our neighboring municipalities that they can get a, a residence there can buy a library card so they can use the Collingwood Public Library. I don't know why we can't work out some sort of similar arrangement with our, our neighbors for beach access. So I think that's something we should be exploring. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Christopher Baines. I would say that the horse is out of the barn on this one. It, uh, we are a creature of our geography, unfortunately. However, strategically in the long term, with our community being a Four Seasons community, it would be wonderful if we had more to offer, not only to our residents, but to our visitors coming up as well, because it helps our local economy. Uh, as I said, as a mediator for 20 years, uh, I'm always hoping that there is negotiation and wiggle room here between ourselves and our neighbours to try and see if we can come up with some sort of deal in the short term and perhaps even strategically something better in the long term, uh, meaning perhaps a, an appropriate acquisition. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Cam Ecclestone. Um, I just don't see this as an issue. I, I think that um, everybody I talk with uh, is happy with the accessibility, and uh, I don't think we have an issue. Thank you, Cam. Rob Ring. Um, what has been said is, is true, but I've been to this tonight and uh, Tuesday night. I've heard from anywhere from 14 to 30 different access points to get to, to the beaches, but I didn't know we had that many beaches in Collingwood. The access we can get, as, as Chris alluded to, it gets you to the water, but they're not beaches. I think the question was having to be, a, be able to enjoy a beach. And, uh, and, and I think Connelly's done a pretty good job. Uh, the beaches we have are Sunset Point. You can get behind the terminals now and swim, if that's what you're looking for, the boating. Um, but I think what we're, if, if we're looking for access to beaches outside of Collingwood, that's something that I think Deb was going to allude to, was we've got to get an agreement with the surrounding communities to make some type of a deal for our citizens to have access to their beaches. We now have access to our own beaches as far as I'm concerned. Thank you, Rob. Steve Johns. I'm not really uh, sure I have a whole lot more to add. Uh, the beaches, the waterfront, uh, this is a, a jewel of Collingwood and a jewel of the immediate region. And uh, so I agree. I think uh, we have to find ways to safeguard access for our residents. Uh, if there are opportunities for collaboration with our neighboring uh, municipalities, I think we have to uh, explore those uh, uh, opportunities, uh, share the wealth, as it were. Uh, enforcement certainly is a key uh, with respect to uh, visitors uh, coming in. Uh, I think uh, uh, Ms. Jeffrey made a good point about uh, Millennium Park. That may create, uh, as part of this uh, Green Terminals uh, development, some opportunities as well. Um, that's about it. <laughs> I beat you. <laughs> Steve Perry. Uh, just to add on to what Deb was getting at, she actually told me what she was going to finish with, but anyway, I won't share that with you. Um, Teamwork. <laughs> that's interesting info. But what I'd like to see beyond that is uh, reciprocal visitation rights at, at other beaches. Quite often my wife and I go down to Delphi Beach to, to take the dog or to go swimming, kayaking, whatever it may be. But it'd be wonderful if, if people in the town of Blue Mountains can come to Collingwood as well and, and use our beaches. I also have another issue. And, Maybe you don't, but I have an issue with the hotspot parking thing. I very seldom get it to work. It, I struggle with it every time I go to park. I would love to see something that we could put on the dash of our car or on our, our rear view mirror to say we're a resident, and it's not hard to do. All you need to do is register your license number, and you're good to go. I would much prefer that than the hotspot parking. Thank you. Thank you, Steve.
Think it's okay to drive high? Think again. Drug-impaired driving is as illegal as drunk driving, and in Ontario, the penalties are the same. If police suspect you're driving under the influence of drugs of any kind or a combination of drugs and alcohol and you fail a roadside test, your license will be suspended immediately for up to 30 days. You'll pay a penalty of $198. And you can be charged with a criminal offense of impaired driving the same as alcohol. Driving high is never okay. I am God Greg. My name means everything. Tom Longboats. I am Wolf Clan, Onondaga Nation. I've run many different races. I've run to survive and to be free. I've run to win for honor. His people might be lazy, but this one's damn fast. My people respected our runners, people who carried important messages from village to village. I need a guide to the next post. Dispatch carrier, sir. I can get you there. God's sakes, sir. Slow down. Who do you think I am, Tom Longboat? No, sir. I am. Running makes me feel alive. It's everything. Tom Longboat was the first indigenous person to win the Boston Marathon. He ran his way to international fame and became an inspiration to generations of athletes. On Rogers TV, we have a reality show like no other. It has a great cast of characters. Some you may have even helped land the role. Each episode has something different. Plans are devised, decisions are made, votes are cast, and money is spent. It's local reality TV that you won't want to miss. And it's exclusive to Rogers Cable customers. Catch your municipal council coverage on Rogers TV. Visit rogerstv.com for broadcast details. Kathy Jeffrey, if you can come up for the next question, please. As a candidate, would you support the formation of a council advisory committee on climate action? Uh, certainly, I would uh, support uh, an advisory committee for the climate change. I think the file has expanded, and that was my idea of including the public in um, a revisit to our community-based strategic plan, because I think some of the items we have in there have taken on um, a greater uh, importance or urgency. And although Council's done a lot of great things, I think that we can always benefit from the uh, volunteers and experts in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Chris Potts. Can you repeat that question again, Shane? I certainly can. As a candidate, would you support the formation of a council advisory committee on climate action? Yeah, uh, of course. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a complete expert on climate change, and I think there's, we could probably use tools in the community to do that. Um, we've obviously got some big challenges coming up in the, in the very near future, and, and I think that uh, I would support it and, uh, and stand behind it. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Brandon Houston. Um, absolutely. I, I'm actually surprised we don't already have one, but um, I had a conversation with somebody last year that made a statement about, well, we're just one small little community. And the problem with that is if every community takes that stance, then we don't move the needle forward. Um, so I think we can be one small community that can help contribute to the challenge that we're facing with climate. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> Ian Chadwick. Uh, that's just one of many public advisory committees I'd like to see uh, the new council implement. Uh, I'm, like Brandon, I'm surprised we don't already have that. None of the people who you're going to elect have all the information, know everything. Public advisory committees pr give the opportunity to get that information, to give us advice and give us directions. So I'd be very much in favor of that. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Christopher Bain. Uh, my answer would be yes and no. We already have a climate action committee here in town. So I would just say rather than invent a new one from council, 
just ask them to report to us rather than another structure because we've got already a committee doing a good job. So why reinvent the wheel? Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Cam Ecclestone. Yeah, I would support an advisory uh, committee. Uh, although, you know, Collingwood does pretty well in our canopy and uh, having the developers plant two trees for every one they take down, and uh, we're doing pretty well. So uh, I don't know what else I can add. Thank you. Thank you, Cam. Rob Ring. Um, I, too, agree that we, we should have some type of a, uh, a, a committee that uh, will look after this or, or work to strive to reduce uh, climate change. But as Chris said, I was under the impression there was already a committee in town. It might not be run by the municipality, but I think the Partners of uh, Climate Con Protection Program um, are working diligently on, on, uh, on this thing, and I think that if uh, we can work in conjunction with the committee that's already there, we got one foot already in the door. Thank you, Rob. Steve Johns. Well, as it relates to climate change, uh, and for that matter, a host of other uh, issues of importance and priority, I'm a big believer in uh, uh, tapping into the uh, community, engaging uh, the community, uh, empowering the community to get involved in these issues. Uh, a big fan of uh, you know participation in roundtables, citizen forums, task forces, advisory focus groups, those types of things. There's huge intellectual property within the community, and uh, we'd be really silly as a, as a town and as a council to not leverage that and take full advantage. Thank you very much. Steve Perry. I was not aware there was a committee, but I'm fully supportive of it. But I, uh, as again, I was driving around town the other day, and I, this is a question for developers. I noticed over at Summit View uh, neighborhood, I went by, when a devel developer develops a piece of land, they know fully well where the park is going to be. So when I went by Summit View, they had a huge, giant park there, which is fantastic, but there are no trees in it. So when you develop a piece of land, why does every tree need to be pulled down and then something put in later? There's already there are already mature trees in that area. They don't need to pull those ones down. Thank you, Steve. Deb Doherty. Thanks. The Collingwood Climate Action Team are independent of the town, although they have been funded uh, with a grant from the town. But they are a passionate, knowledgeable group of citizens, and we only have one staff that's devoted to climate change and climate change mitigation activities. So without uh, co-oping them, without their permission, I would think that there might be some great synergies there to uh, pull the climate action team in closer to work more collaboratively with the town. Um, and further, you know, we do have, as Steve said, an, an amazingly talented, experienced, uh, well-traveled community and why don't we co-op more of our citizens for other committees? As an example, economic development. We used to have an economic development committee. We don't anymore. So this is something I would be Thank promoting. You, Deb. Thank you. So we've reached the end of the question portion of this. Um, Receiving questions without any advance notice is, uh, is pretty admirable that these pe folks uh, stand up, so please give them a hand. Well done. I'm Mallory, and I was walking home one night when an impaired driver hit me. He had been overserved in two bars before getting behind the wheel. If the servers would have called him a cab instead of serving him more alcohol, my life would be the same as what it used to be. I think servers play the biggest role in keeping us safe because it's up to them what state the person's in when they leave. 
Refusing service isn't personal, it's the law. for your work. There are rumors freedom's coming for us all. Freedom, you know that's all I want. Chloe, careful. Vroom men would rather sell you across the river to America than let you go free. Then I'll run. I've run before. Maybe this time for good. No! No! Just get her into a boat. No! Chloe Cooley's resistance led to Canada's first legislation limiting slavery. After 200 years, slavery was abolished in Canada in 1834. Now we move on to the closing remarks. Each candidate will have one minute for their statement. Let's call up Chris Potts to start the ball rolling, please. Thank you. So since May 9th, when I filed for council, I hit the campaign trail running. I, along with my dad, we've canvassed over 2,000 doors. I've listened to the residents. I've heard their concerns, and I've been following closely at the previous council meetings. I'm ready to become your next councillor. I'm ready to work for you, the residents, and continue to move Collingwood in a direction everyone can enjoy. My phone is always on, my door is always open, and I promise to be here for each and every one of you. I, Chris Potts, ask for your support on October 24th. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Brandon Houston. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for coming out and being engaged tonight. Um, I had something here, but I'm actually not going to bother reading it. I, um, as you can see, I'm not wearing a suit. And um, I thought about this. I even reached out to a friend and said, should I? Um, and I decided no, because what you see here is me. Um, that's all you're going to get. Um, I'm not going to be somebody that I'm not. I'm not going to say something that I don't believe, and I'm not going to do something that doesn't sound right to me. So that is why I would say, if you're going to vote, vote for me, because this is what you're going to get. My door is open downtown, and if you have any questions or want to talk at any point, please stop by. Thank you, Brandon. <clears throat> Ian Chadwick. As I said in my opening, I'm here because I care. I want to contribute my experience, my skills, uh, my knowledge to make a better Collingwood. I have the passion, uh, I have the knowledge and the attitude to do the work, and I will continue to be outspoken when I'm on council. I look forward to your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Christopher Baines. Thank you. I just want to acknowledge all of these uh, very uh, wonderful candidates because I think whoever wins on October 24th, you should be well served because you've got a, quite a, a spectrum of experience and uh, dedication here. So. 
And just for my own part, I'd just like to say that if, as, and when uh, Council needs someone who has been in the business of conflict resolution and trying to work out deals, if you will, from warring parties, my services, as well as my services on various boards and commissions and uh, organizations, could come in well and could be useful, I would think. <laughs> so I would just say, in conclusion, if you would go and look at beansforcouncil.com, you'll get a full briefing on my issues, my priorities, and my experience. I may have been last as a speaker tonight, but I am first on the ballot, and I hope I'll be first in your hearts. Thank you. Cam Ecclestone. Yeah, I ask, I ask for your support for one simple reason. Uh, as a councillor, I would like to uh, continue my work on youth homelessness. I have a passion for it. These kids deserve a break. Uh, we need to do better. Madison Hat, Alberta, has declared that they have ended homelessness. And I would like to take from there uh, notes, I guess, or whatever, uh, how they did it. And uh, I would like to continue that work. And as a councillor, you need, I need to be in touch with the county. And uh, only as a councillor can you really do that. So I want to continue my work, and please help me. Thank you. Thank you, Cam. Rob Ring. I've been asked if I have thick enough skin to deal with the complaints I might receive from disgruntled citizens. My response usually begins with a polite smile and I say, I do. When asked why, I simply say, I have spent 44 years involved in minor hockey. If you are or have been a hockey parent, you'll understand what I mean. Seriously, I don't have municipal political experience yet, but I can assure you that it won't be a hindrance. View my web page regardless if it's my professional or volunteer career, you'll see how often I advance to a leadership position. Procedurally, the OMHA conducted business similar to Collingwood Council. Like all new councillors, there'll be a learning period. Um, she got me the yellow flag. Um, I'm confident it won't take long to contribute. I promise to work hard and make informed decisions for Collingwood as my top priority. I'm Rob Ring, I request your support. Thank you, Rob. Steve Johns. At the outset, I do have a bit of an apology to make. Uh, the last, the rows in the last third of the room, I don't believe received my uh, information cards. Frankly, I ran out of uh, uh, cards. I apologize for that. Um, but at any rate, once again, I, I want to thank all of you for being here this evening, and hopefully you've uh, found the time to be well spent. And over the remaining three and a half weeks of the campaign, I look forward to meeting as many of you as possible while on the hustings. I also encourage those of you with additional uh, questions, concerns, or ideas to not hesitate to contact me via email or through my website, especially those of you at the back of the room. And, uh, and, and, and lastly, I am very excited by the prospect of being elected and providing the quality rep uh, of representation you deserve and very much hope that I can count on your vote. Thank you again for being here. Thank you, Steve. Steve Perry. First of all, I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce, the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 63, and Rogers TV for hosting this event. I also would like to thank everyone here and those watching at home for taking the time out of your evening to be with us tonight. It's been a privilege over the past few weeks to be a part of this process and get to know the other candidates. We all have a passion for the betterment of Collingwood and any one of us will do our best to shape its future. It would be an honour to work with any one of these candidates. We will sit in council chambers, debate various issues, and sometimes disagree. However, at the end of the day, the goal is to walk out with respect for each other, knowing we are working as a team to reach a common goal. As a team player, I feel I would be a great contribution to Collingwood Council, and I hope you will consider me when casting your vote. I'm always available. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Deb Doherty. Uh, 
Uh, I'll also extend my thanks to the Chamber and to Rogers and to the Legion for putting this great event on. As a three-term member of Council with focus on land use planning matters, I have the experience and the understanding of the process to help navigate our town and move our new Council forward. We're a growing community with incredible beauty and, and amenities and a financial status that is the envy of hundreds of municipalities in Ontario. So let's build on the positives, build on our incredible strengths and move ahead with energy and optimism. Please support me for your new council. Thank you, Deb. Kathy, Jeffrey, you get the last word. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were going to say I was going to get a buy. <laughs> Someone at the back of the room started by saying we should have a buy for one spot on council. I thought that was going to happen. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you again very much for being here, and I am asking very much for your support. I hope you will encourage your neighbors and your friends to get out and vote as well and, and ask them to vote for me too. Um, I hope that you continue to engage in the process. I think it would be wonderful if that uh, all the questions left in that coveted uh, pickled egg jar uh, could be listed uh, by the chamber and shared if they were so inclined with the candidates because I think that's the pulse of our community and it tells us what uh, they're, they're concerned about. So I would really love that. So I've rented a couple of um, Collingwood uh, Town Park locations, museum and the amphitheater. Please come visit me. Keep asking questions. Please vote Kathy Jeffrey. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. One more huge thank you. It takes a lot to put yourself out there in the public to run for office, so please give them all a big round of applause. But I also, I also want you to give yourself a round of applause for being here to, to find out what's going on in our community. Just a reminder, the Town of Collingwood are here tonight at the, uh, at the table at the back of the room to be able to assist you with any questions you might have. On behalf of the Collingwood Chamber of Commerce, we'd like to thank the councillor candidates for participating, the dedicated membership of the Collingwood Chamber of Commerce, and a special thanks to Trish Irwin who pulled this all together and all of the directors. Don't forget, voting will open at 10 o'clock on October 8th and will run till 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. on October 24th. From the Collingwood Chamber of Commerce, have a wonderful evening. Get out and vote. I am Shane McLaughlin.
call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Focus better. Partner better. Sleep better. Breathe better. Love better. Work better. Friend better. Unwind better. Everything gets better when you get active. What kind of show do you want to see on Rogers TV? What interests you? Log on to RogersTV.com, fill out a show proposal, and tell us about your segment idea. We want to know what you want to see. Rogers TV, only on Rogers. At St. John Ambulance, we're all about community. We teach life-saving skills and provide community support through our volunteer services. All St. John Ambulance 